Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Potential Unleashed. We're back with another video and in this video we're going to be ranking around 30 characters who I think are the strongest in the series and it, I said around 30 because well it's really 31 because the person that i included was boa hancock because well i feel like she gets disrespected a lot and i think her strength is underrated and originally she was in my top 30 but i forgot somebody i forgot sabo so we can't leave sabo off so i decided you know i just do 31 because well it's my video but I just want to clarify, I'm not a power scaler, nor do I strive to be one. These are just my thoughts, and if you disagree with me, hey, you can kick rocks. But these are the characters that we have. It's a big tier list, so I just separated by the first 30. And as you guys can see, there is these two people right here. They are Admiral Kenneth. I'm not including them because we haven't seen them. And I feel like all of the people above deserve their spot because they've proven more. And I think it would be disrespectful just to put those two based off of i guess nothing that we see no feats nothing and i guess you could say the same for green bull but he is an admiral and so you know we haven't really seen much from shanks but we're gonna include him i don't know it doesn't make much sense but i'm just not including those two and one more thing i just want to clarify that they i don't think i think there's like three are who are the strongest and stand above the rest but i also think that there are some admirals who could beat some yonko some yonko that can beat some admirals some first commanders um are right next to each other i don't think it's by a far margin and all these people i think they could fight one another and they can compete all right but starting off with blackbeard i have him at mid top tier hasn't proven much we don't know what his hockey control is like don't know if he has conquerors doesn't know if he has advanced but he does have two devil fruits he has the yami yami no me uh which can nullify basically your devil fruit ability and he has the guru guru no me which was stated to have the power to destroy the world so he has two of the most broken devil fruits in this series his bounty's over two billion he's a yonko so i think blackbeard deserves that spot boa hancock is someone who i think we disrespect and don't give her enough credit i think she's the top four strongest warlords Doflamingo, flamingo probably mihawk are the only two maybe kuma you could argue i'd say would be over her her devil is pretty broken if you're attracted to her then you basically get turned to stone and she has great hockey control she has all three forms of hockey and in marine fort she was one shotting pacifistas and a lot of other strong navy and i guess allied pirates and to show the whole straw hat crew were struggling against one pacifist a pre-time skip next we have ben beckman we haven't seen much from him i think he's low top tier because they say that he's relative to shanks and i think shanks is the second strongest yonko so i have ben beckman low top tier simply because of portrayal and how people talk about him and because they say he's like the moon and shanks his son and that they're relative and close together in terms of strength next we have kizaru no question high top tier he low diffs people right we saw what he did to the straw hat crew um against marco he didn't take much damage marco just kicked him once he wasn't scared of ben beckman when beckman pulled out the gun because i was still attack lost polar tang um i don't think there's many people in the series that beat him probably just a kind of kaido and maybe dragon next we have vista this is the only picture they had from it. I know it's Young Vista, but we're talking about people in the current series. So that's why people like Whitebeard, Shiki, Roger, they're not here. And so for people like Sengoku, um, Garp, and Rayleigh, I'm talking about them in the current story, not their prime or what they were in the past. So Vista, I think Vista goes high second, maybe even low first. He was able to clash against Mihawk and was able to go against Mihawk at Marine Fort holding his own. And we know how impressive that is because of what Mihawk did to Zoro in the East Blue. Another no-brainer, Big Mom. I personally think Kizaru's stronger, but I would not be surprised if people put her over him. I'm just not going to. But in a high dip, I think whatever the fight is between the two is going to be extreme diff. Where it could probably be a coin toss who wins. She has the soul, soul fruit. Um, she clashed with Kaido for a day, was a part of the Rocks Pirates, has all three forms of hockey. And we've seen her uh, in Whole Cake Island. She was able to knock a Gear 4th Luffy out of his um, Gear 4th, which... To put that in perspective, we saw what Luffy did against Doflamingo. Doflamingo's pretty strong. And we also see Big Mom. She took out Page 1 with one shot um, in Onigashima. She's been doing a lot there as well. Sabo. 
chief of staff, second to only Dragon in the Revolutionary Army. He has great hockey control. We don't know if he has conquerors, but he has observation and armament. He has the Dragon Claw ability, the Dragon Claw Fist, and then he had the Mare Mare no Mi. We saw how much that improved his strength. He was able to clash against Fujitora, and he didn't even master his Dove Fruit then, and so now that he has more use of it and more control, and he has a little bit of mastery over it, I think Sub was stronger than what we give him credit for. Now, he is currently missing in a story but i don't think sabo's dead or kidnapped i just think he's gone into hiding roa noah zoro i have him high first commander i was going to put him low top tier because i used to think he was equal at luffy but then with stuff recent chapters i think luffy slightly over zoro zoro what can you say um in his viver card it stated that he's a dai kaigo which is a great swordsman and a great swords master he's been recognized by his peers um he scarred kaido block ocean sovereignty he can keep up with the top tiers i think he's over a cat i think he's over a king simply because he was able to speed blitz kaido a little bit and so kaido was fast in katakuri i think that we don't give zoro the credit he deserves and that zoro is one of the strongest in the series heavenly demon do flamingo i have him over vista and i have him over boa hancock the only warlord i think is stronger than him is mihawk he has conquerors we saw he was putting luffy through his paces um Luffy and Law wasn't enough to take him down. It took Luffy to get this insane power up. Gear 4, the King Kong gun. We saw what he did with the bird cage with his awakening. Doflamingo Flamingo is just a strong individual. I think Dragon is the second strongest in the series. He's the most wanted criminal for a reason. We haven't seen him much. He probably has a wind devil fruit. We saw what he did at Logetown. Um, how he was able to cover such a massive area with whatever ability he was using. He trained Sabo. So... He's obviously stronger than what Sabu is, and I just think Dragon, we don't really pay much attention to him because we don't know what he's capable of, but he's strong. Blackleg Sanji, I'm putting him over Doflamingo with the raid suit because Sanji, he's another one I think we underappreciate and underrate. Sanji, he was... Especially in Dress Rosa, he wasn't stronger than Doflamingo. I put him like low third. But now after Whole Cake Island and gaining the raid suit, Sanji has great observation as showcased when he dodged the jelly bean from Katakuri, who can see into the future, by the way. And we have yet to see Sanji incorporate the Diablo Jamba with the raid suit. We know how durable, how fast it is, and the different techniques it allows him to do. And then there's Mihawk. Personally, I don't know. I'm going to put him over Big Mom. I could see people put him over Kazarda, but I'm not going to. I think Mihawk is stronger than Shanks. I have Mihawk over Shanks. He's the strongest swordsman for a reason. There's not more for me to say. Fujitora. I have Fujitora mid-top tier. I don't, I'm going to put him over Blackbeard. I just haven't seen enough from Blackbeard. Fujitora, his gravity fruit is broken. He can bring down meteors, and he has probably the best observation in the series because he's blind and he can still move and compete with all these characters and he showed no fear when yelling back with Akainu that he didn't fear what Akainu had to say and he truly believed if need push comes to shove he probably could have taken Akainu down. Katakuri mid top tier uh, not pff, mid first commander he is busted this man's devil fruit mixed with his observation hockey it's insane katakuri was out here just dog walking luffy for hours and hours on end and the way he has great hockey control the great use of his devil fruit intuition his iq katakuri is just that dude and i can't wait to see him again and see how strong he's become this is going to be controversial i think zoro has proven more than what marco's done marco lost to blackbeard uh right out of the time well during the time skip um i do think marco strong he was able to keep king and queen at bay at the same time but we also saw he wasn't able to sustain that as they overpowered him um but his dove fruit is broken he was also able to clash and stop big mom momentarily so marco is strong i could see the argument of people move him up or see people here but i'm gonna personally put him slightly below Zoro. Diamond Jozu. I think he's over Hancock. His devil fruit 
it was able to stop Mihawk's sli uh, flying slash attack. I don't know how much force Mihawk put into that, but he was also able to hit Aokiji and make Aokiji bleed. He was able to lift that giant iceberg as well. So I kind of wish that Jozu was in Wano now. I love his fruit, and I think we didn't see enough from him at Marine Ford. Aokiji, I have Aokiji over Kizaru. They fought Aok Akainu, I believe, for 10 days. Might have been three. But I'm pretty sure it's 10 days. Somebody, uh, I'll probably have it on the screen somewhere after I'm recording this. But he has great endurance. Um, his ice devil fruit, broken, busted. He has advanced, what we believe, advanced observation and advanced armament. The way he dodged Whitebeard's uh, attacks and the way that they he canceled stuff out of Marine Fort. He was also able to freeze a whole tidal wave, a tsunami that Whitebeard brought in. And so I think Aokiji strong and we don't give him enough credit. There is not one first commander, I think, that's stronger than Luffy. Luffy has proven so much how he's graduated with his Devil Fruit, how he's improved his hockey control. He has all types of advanced versions, advanced conquerors, advanced observation, advanced armament. He's able to keep up with a hybrid Kaido. Now, Kaido is weakened, but he was able to split the sky. We've only seen a handful of people do that. And there's no limit to what Luffy's ceiling is. He's evolving quickly, and he's learning how to control his Devil Fruit with his hockey and improving on his physical strength so he does doesn't have to rely solely on his double fruit. Next we have King. Like I said, I think anybody that's in a row with each other that they can be switched out and that they could win with somebody at any time. Um, but King, at first I thought King was like right here. I thought he was disappointing, but in chapter 1027, King, he, even though Zoro, he did fight on the rooftop and Zoro's a little bit more exhausted than him. Zoro still has pretty much all his stamina back and King was proven. We know Zoro is primarily, we know him and he utilizes physical strength in his attack and King overpowered him. It's, there's no if, ands, or what about it. King overpowered Zoro. So I think I gotta give him a little bit more credit. Trafalgar Law. He's, he's low first. Law is... <sighs> His hockey control isn't the best, but his devil fruit is so busted, you can't not put him here. He does so much that it's so tricky with his powers, his injection shot, his counter shot, his gamma knife, like law. He was able to make Doflamingo bleed eternally from the inside, leaving a mortal wound, and he also got much stronger. And what he did on the rooftop with tact, um, implementing his abilities with other people, I think we got to give him more credit. This ain't even a question. The strongest creature, Kaido. Kaido Shinron is whooping everybody on the rooftop. He's fought since the raid began. He's fought, what, 9, 14, 15, like 16 different people on the rooftop. There's nothing more to say. Old Rayleigh. This is going to be controversial. I think Old Rayleigh is probably overrated in terms of strength. I don't think there's one first commander that he beats. I think it'll be an extreme diff fight, but Rayleigh is not as impressive people make him out to be. I see some people have Ray, still have Rayleigh over Luffy and over Zoro and over Marco and all these people. Like, in his prime, oh yeah, Rayleigh 100% is up here with these people, but no, Rayleigh's old, all right? He sips on tea and drinks liquor with Shaki, like, relax. And I don't want to go too long, but I'm going to say the same thing with Sengoku. Sengoku does have all three types of hockey. He's the Buddha, has a mythical um, devil fruit. But he's old. Like, I don't know why people want to put them so high. We have Eustace Kid. I have him over Law. Um, because simply, I think he's proven a little bit more. Uh, I think a lot of people give him a lot of hate for what he did on a rooftop. But he's fighting Big Mom with Law right now. And one of my favorite moments from him is when he hit Big Mom with a punk Gibson and slammed her into the ground. And he also tanked a fist, a hockey encoded fist from Big Mom and was able to use repel on her. So that just shows his endurance and his strength. Yamato, I have Yamato on the level of Zoro and on the level of Marco. Fought against Kaido for a long time. I feel like people are smoking that Yamato pack recency bias. They have her. I sometimes see people say over Zoro. Sometimes I see people say over Luffy. But just because she was able to clash with a Thunder Boggle. But now we know in chapter 1027, she didn't tank that crap. She It just took a little while and she sh didn't tank it at all. She actually inflicted or got inflicted a lot of damage on her where she's leaking from the head. I do think she's strong. But over any of these people, I can't, I can't say that's truthful. Shira, you have the rain. 
I have him mid first. I have him on the lower end simply because we haven't seen him. But from his portrayal, um, portrayal from his portrayal, I think he is very strong. We saw what he did at Impel Down. As soon as he got out, he cut everybody up. And the way that they portray Luffy and Zoro, they portray him and Blackbeard in the same way. Akainu, the strongest Marine right now. I have him. I think he's the third strongest, the most offensive Devil Fruit in the series. Um, I think it goes Kaido Dragon and then. Um, Akainu, the face of the pirates, the face of the revolutionaries, and the face of the marines. Queen. I have Queen over Boa Hancock, but not over Jozu. I do think that Queen is very strong. We saw how he um, was able to tank and was able to take some of Big Mom's attacks, and he still was able to get up. We saw what he did against Big Mom, and we see what he's doing against Sanji right now. And again, this is not really impressive, but Chopper's monster point, he was able to not take any damage from him really for 30 minutes straight green bull we ain't seen much from him so i'm gonna put him on the low top tier but i do think he's probably you could make the argument he's equal to fujitora but i'm putting him here doflamingo may mention that they are the new admirals are monsters maybe we'll see him in wano i don't know same with old garp i think he's stronger than sengoku i even put him over Rayleigh too but I can't put him over anybody else in a series. He's just he's just too old, man. And at last we have Shanks. I have Shanks. I kind of want to reorder this a little bit. I kind of want to do this. Okay, I have Shanks under Mihawk. Shanks probably has the best hockey control in the series. But Mihawk's a stronger swordsman. I'm team Mihawk over Shanks. Even though I like Shanks more as a character, I just think Mihawk is stronger. All right, so this is actually better because I was looking through the end seeing if I want to change anything. Like I said, I could see the argument of this. I could see that. I could also see this right here or this right here, but I'm going to leave it like this. And then I could also see Zoro going down one, um, Yamato going up over that, or I could see Zoro up here at the same time. I could see this. I could see that. I could see a lot of potential with all this stuff, but this is my list. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with me in the comment section below, but thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, the notification bell so you guys never miss out on a new video. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. It's on the screen in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to unleash your potential.